Hi everyone and welcome back to a new Angular Spring Boot episode. Now we've already reached our 10th installment and today we're going to talk about routing and routes. Now in the previous episode we added our navigation component which contains two links, one for notes and one for the feedback page, but right now they don't do anything. So in order to add some capabilities to our navigation component we need to enable routing and configure routing for our application. Uh, the idea being that when you click notes we should be directed to a note component and when we click feedback we should be transferred to a feedback view or component. Now before we get started I want to remind you that you can subscribe to the Romanian Coder channel in order to receive notifications when new courses are available. Okay so a brief history of routing. What is routing? Well, simply put, routing enables our application to navigate from one view to another based on some user input, like when the user clicks a link or a button or after some action has been performed or when we change the URL. Uh, in this particular episode, we are going to see um, how to import and configure the Angular router and the routes for our application. We are going to display our routes using a router outlet and we are going to use router links to enrich our anchor elements and enable them to take us back and forth between views. Now let's write some code. The first thing that we need to create are the three views. We need to have one view for notes, another one for feedback and the third one for not found. So because views are ultimately Angular components, we just have to create a few new components. Let's get to the first one. I'll hit new Angular schematic. I'll select component and I'll create the feedback component. Okay, so here it is. And for the rest, let's just use the terminal for a change. So up until now, we have created a component using the IntelliJ Angular, you know, tools, but you can also use the Angular CLI. So we need to type ng generate component and we'll call our component notes. Okay, as you can see we have the exactly same result. We have a spec file, a TS class, a style sheet, a view and that component being registered in that module. And ng generate component not found. Now, the outcomes are the same. You can use which one you think suits your needs better. Okay, so now that we have our free components, I'll go ahead and remove the spec files because we definitely don't need them. Okay, no, I don't want to move anything. And I want to delete this. Okay. Now let's go ahead and configure the router. To configure the router, we need to make some modifications to the app module. So we have our default application module, which is this one. The first thing that we need to do is we need to import, you know, the router and routes. Okay. And I actually think, actually for that it's going to, okay, router, okay, and routes. I just needed some little help here. Okay, so we have imported the router and the routes. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to actually define our list of routes. So we'll create a new constant, we'll call it app routes of type routes, and it's going to be an array and it's going to be an array of route objects and each route object basically uh, has one path and one component. Now the path refers to the um, URL that we'll have to type um, in the browser and the component is the component that is going to be rendered when that URL is hit. So when we go to localhost uh, for, for 4200 nodes, we want to render the nodes component. Okay, when we navigate to feedback, I want to render the feedback component. 
okay so right now we have this uh, navigation for notes and feedback there are two more things that I want to configure here so I want to configure a default path so which basically means which route should be active by default so we create um, a default route and I want to render the notes component because when the user first um, opens this application uh, I like the notes component to be displayed and I think also need to provide a path match and need to have a full match and one last thing that I want to define in here is an error an error route okay so we'll create our path and this path is going to be two stars so two stars basically means when none of your routes are hit what should the router then display and the component should be the not found component now I made a mistake here it's not a matcher it's path match actually okay so we defined four routes one for notes one for feedback the default route and a not a view not found route okay so the third step is to actually you know bootstrap the router so we have the router we have the routes but it's not bootstrapped and in order to actually turn it on we need to do one last thing which is inside the imports we need to import the router module for root because this is going to be the router module for the entire application and we need to pass in the application routes okay so step number two route configuration is complete now we have to do one last thing and that is to actually create a place in our web page where those routes where, where those pages will be displayed because right now for example if we turn the application on although we have configured routing and we have routes uh, they will not be visible because they have no place to get displayed and this is where the um, router link uh, the router outlet comes into play but first okay let's check our application as it is now and observe what's happening okay we'll fire up a browser we'll go to localhost 4200 okay hit enter okay we'll hit f12 and sorry about this okay so okay we click here but nothing is happening and there are two reasons for that it's one because you don't have a router outlet and second one because you did not configure any links on those two anchor tags so the third step that we need to do is we need to define a place where those routes will get rendered and the best place to do it is in the app component and we open the app component view we have uh, the app navigation which is the upper bar and here we can actually create a router outlet and what this will do is okay this page will render the application navigation and immediately underneath it it will display our main views okay and to actually achieve this okay let's go here we'll go to localhost 4200 okay so we see we already display the initial note the um, the notes although we did not type in notes we already have it working and now if I type in feedback we have feedback working and if I type in something you know like blah blah the route only found and the not found component is being rendered but 
if you notice these two links don't do anything and that's because you do, did not add router links to them so let's go ahead and do that we'll go to our navigation component because that's where we have those two links so we have notes and feedback it's pure HTML nothing more no angular binding and here we're going to say router link dash actually it's not a dash it's you know slash notes and here we're going to say router link slash feedback and let's see what we have okay so okay blah blah not found we have the default route we navigate to feedback feedback works we navigate back to notes notes work cool so we have successfully configured our routing now before we close I want to teach you a small secret a uh, you know, small tip um, in very big applications this routing mechanism can become quite complex so you have lots of routes or lots of sub routes we can have nested you know a router outlet and inside the component we can have another router outlet and things can get really out of hand so it will really help you if you have some tracing of how the routing mechanism works and if you want to enable tracing for your routes all you have to do is when you configure the router with your routes you can actually pass in some additional configuration and I think it's called enable tracing and we have to set enable tracing to true now we build our application again we go here and now you can see in the console we already have these events these router events so when I navigate back to feedback okay you can see the navigation started you can see the URL and you can see all the events that are triggered during a route change and these kinds of logs can be really 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 useful when debugging complex applications before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at Romanian Coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.